beauty blender side this looks like it's a more natural finish it doesn't look as strong as with a brush I'm gonna take this much and I'm just gonna build up in the areas where I would try to spot conceal <laughs> I'm very happy I just got samples. Let's start. First item I wanna talk about is the Too Faced Prime and Peachy. So that's their primer. I do like the packaging. I like the actual packaging style of the tube. I love a tube. Anything I can just kind of squeeze out. The packaging design with the peaches and the, and the cream and all that. To be honest, when I look at Too Faced's packaging, I'm so used to it being girly or just all kind of cuckoo stuff on it that a lot of times I look at it and it just goes right over my head. Like I just come to expect it. Believe me, if I saw something like black and sleek, I'd be like, whoa, am I in the right section? From what I've gathered from researching this collection, the complexion products are geared for that mattifying appearance. Let's control the oil, let's mattify the complexion. And then just adding, you know, the bronze glow with the bronzers and the, the light blush and the lipstick. But the actual complexion products, primer, foundation, powder, they all seem to uh, work together in a sense to mattify and control that oil. With the Primed and Peachy Primer, it's marketed as a primer that's going to mattify but also blur the skin. So you're going to get the two benefits as one. It also has that sweet fig and that peach scent. So it has the fragrance in it, like what we're kind of used to with a lot of the other products with Too Faced. Now, one thing that stood out the most to me about this primer is the aspect of it being a cooling sensation. I didn't understand that, and I don't see how that ties in with the whole experience of the primer. The primer also claims to 
have a almost like a peach tone to it, which is going to be helpful to help brighten up your skin. It's hardly noticeable is what I've noticed. Very, I mean, I can't detect it on my skin. When I touch this primer and I'm just touching it in the actual container, it, it, it makes this spring action. It's very much like, like Play-Doh. You know, you play with Play-Doh as a kid. And it has a very strong scent. I have to admit that the scent that's infused in these products have a higher fragrance level. To me, it does. The other collection, the Sweet Peach, it wasn't as strong as this. I don't know if it's the fig or what. This fragrance, I feel it's, it's just, it's heavy. I am constantly smelling it. I was intrigued by this whole cooling sensation because I put it on my face and I could feel the cooling sensation. I can feel it, it's cold, like it's been in the fridge for a little bit. And even when you first apply it, let's say, maybe if you wanna swatch it on your hand, it's, it feels cold, but then it disappears. It just disappears. It's not like I'm walking around all day with a cold face, like my face is in a freezer feeling all day. It doesn't feel like that. You just put it on and you go. So I'm thinking again, what is that sensation supposed to do? I feel from looking at the ingredients list way up at the top, you have ingredients that is fragrance. Fragrance is high up there. And you have the this whole emollient stuff that is supposed to create the texture and the whole cooling sensation. I don't even know how to say it. And then you get down to the mattifying agreements that I methicone, talc, and then you go down the list. Why did you even put that in there? Why would you put high up on the ingredient list almost just like a gimmick, a cosmetic item. Like how I would think of if I saw in a skincare product and it had glitter infused. Um, I've said that before. If a glitter is, let's say, infused in a skincare item, why put that in there if you want to kind of help mask um, or brighten something up? Why don't you just use a skincare ingredient? So that was what turned me off with this Primed and Peachy Primer was that high up there that they put fragrance. The fragrance was before the mattifying ingredients. I feel that the cooling sensation is just a mental property. It's just to make you feel good, make you feel like it's doing something. Then of course you have that strong fragrance as you're applying it onto your face. And then of course, you know, here are the ingredients to help mattify and smooth my skin. Don't recall if Too Faced has another primer that is geared towards mattifying the skin. I believe on their website there is that primed and poreless, but I don't know if that's going to be phased out. But really, they just have their RX primer. I have a ton of these samples. And this RX hangover primer is, that's definitely a hydrating primer. That's something to add moisture and help it stay retained into the skin as well as prolong you know, your makeup use. So I think about, well, maybe that this Peaches and Cream one is their version of their mattifying primer and then they're gonna have the RX hangover. So basically have two primers in their collection. So if that might be the case, and again, I'm just making that assumption, I would prefer to stay with the RX, give me that hydration, and I'm going to stay clear of the Primed and Peachy. Next is the Perfect Peach Comfort Matte Foundation. Now that's another item that I liked in the uh, tube style and it has a pump. The foundation comes in 12 shades and there's only three shades as far as for darker skin tones. I swatched Honey, Mocha, and Mahogany. Honey was much too light for my skin. Mocha was the one I figured would be the closest match to me, or I would hope would be. And the mahogany was much too deep and it has a very strong red undertone. So I picked up Mocha. Now this foundation is marketed as a foundation that will build to a medium coverage. I prefer the medium coverage that I can achieve using a brush, as you can see in the demonstration. Unfortunately, Mocha has that neutral undertone and it 
does show as this gray cast on my skin tone. Here's a clip of what the foundation looks like in natural sunlight so you can kind of get a better idea. On the Sephora app, Mocha reads as deep tan with golden undertones. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to kind of go more in depth about the foundation as far as how it wore, how it looked on me, because I just, I just took it off. Broken record. I'm happy I got a sample because I, I just do not have that uh, confidence in Too Faced that they're going to have foundation that's going to best suit uh, darker skin tones or even my medium dark skin. And last we have the Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Powder. This loose powder also has a slight peach tint to it, same as the uh, Peach Perfect Primer. Now closing this lid, I mean, I just barely opened it up and I got a whoosh of peach scent smell again. Now this loose powder is marketed again as a mattifying loose powder. It's finely milled and it's used to basically set your foundation or set their uh, peach comfort matte foundation. The mattifying claims with this loose powder, I can vouch for that. I definitely felt that in my T-zone, I was nice and mattified. It wasn't a strong matte appearance because I don't apply my loose powder that strong. I just do as a light light dust. I still like a little bit of the dew to come through. I focused this loose powder underneath my eyes to set any type of concealer. I focused it just right in the center of my forehead, down my nose, and right here on my chin area. It did mattify. It did mattify those areas and everything just locked into place. So I can vouch for the fact that I feel that the mattifying properties for this loose powder is there. Here is my gripe about this powder. And I have to admit, moving forward, I am going to be checking ingredients a lot more with products. And if I find anything alarming or if I find anything kind of out of the ordinary, I, I will make notes to make sure that I share it with you. I feel it's important. With this powder, the first time I used it, opening up that container, I just you know poured it into my plate to work from the plate. I could see like vapors, I'm just gonna say vapors, like steam kind of coming up. My mouth was partway open. Even as I'm just blotting my face with the powder, the powder was getting into my mouth. And I was like, mmm, that tastes is sweet. It tastes like, like candy. That's immediately what I thought of. So I'm just, you know, doing my face and it continued to go into my mouth. It's like vapors, like steam of powder around my face. That got old real quick. I'm like, you know what? That's ridiculous. After I finished my face, I checked the ingredients list because I'm like, I need to know what, what I just swallowed. The second ingredient in this powder is what controls the oil. Zia Mags, or in short, it's cornstarch. The third ingredient though is an artificial sweetener and then it's fragrance. Why did you do that? So I'm putting powder on my face and it's vaporizing and steaming. I can smell, I can taste the peach, the candy. This is, this, this, <laughs> this is what I have the problem with. I don't want that gimmicky mess in my makeup. For $32, I want this powder to do what it's supposed to do. I do not want to be tasting it and inhaling it and smelling it all darn day. These items in this collection is gonna be a personal preference. It's going to be, do you like that strong fragrance? Because I think it's just enhanced more in this collection. Let's, let's get away from just the cute packaging in general but fragrance and artificial sweetening products is up there in the ingredient list. I personally don't want it there. You know, if you wanna put it in, put it down further in the list. Give me the item, give me the ingredients that's going to be of quality. Give me the ingredients that's going to help the product perform in the manner in which I paid for. $32 uh, loose powder, $30 primer, $30, $30 foundation. 
I want it to perform well. And I don't want to be worrying about it smelling all darn day. I don't want to be tasting it all day. And I, I just, it was those items that just really turned me off. So who do I feel that this collection is for? I feel that it's for somebody that is looking for oil control, mattifying appearance, and it, it fits your skin tone. So for their demographic, when it comes to Too Faced, especially for their complexion products, their bronzers, you know, they have one bronzer, they have one highlight. When they have just one item in these collections, it's going to be geared towards their demographic market. So someone with light to medium skin tones, you know, just right in the middle. I think that for example, when I was swatching the bronzers, swatching the blushes, I think those are gonna be just too intense for pale skin. But then for darker skin, for example, the bronzers, whether it's the Sweetie Pie, which is gonna look more like a highlighter on um, darker skin tones, but their bronzer with no other additional color in it, that's not gonna even show up on darker skin. So I feel that, you know, somebody that doesn't mind the high fragrance, you like the cute packaging, you are a fan of Too Faced. I feel that the loose powder would be the star for that consumer that wants that. If you're looking for the mattifying and the oil control, because I did see that with the powder. The minus is, of course, is just you're gonna be eating it all day, like you, I uh, guess they want you to uh, feel like you're eating a peach pie, <laughs> for example. But you are going to, it's going to vaporize and steam and I guarantee you'll probably get some in your mouth. So just be careful with that. I am just gonna stick with my ethereal powder. I love this one. I'm pleased with that. I feel the second item that you might get some use out of would be the uh, foundation, the comfort mat. So you know, you have the loose powder and you have the foundation, you can kind of keep them together um, and work in conjunction. And of course, if you are able to find your skin tone within the uh, foundation, look out for the fragrance and so forth. If you're okay with that, then that might be something for you to try. I would say pass on is the primer just based on the aspect of that whole cooling sensation. I'm not gonna let them go on that. I just don't see how that even goes with it. And again, because of the mattifying ingredients for the primer, it's fairly lower down in the ingredient list, but you have everything else higher in there to make this whole sensation and, and the fragrance. I need another primer that's gonna help mattify the skin. You know, the ingredients are up there in which to help mattify your skin, help with the oil control, and then of course blur and smooth wherever you need to be. I think it'd be best just to go find something along that line instead of within this peach collection. With that, we are done. That is my uh, my thoughts and opinion on Too Faced's new peaches and cream collection. I do hope this video has been helpful for you, giving you a little bit more information just to kind of make maybe an informed decision if you want to pick up anything from the collection. I do want to thank you for stopping by and watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day or evening. Please remember to like and subscribe on your way out. And as always, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Goodbye everyone.